Hey there creepy peeps, my name is Nightmare Maven and I love talking about horror. I also don't really like to watch or consume ultra disturbing things, but here we are. If you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. So happy you found my channel. Hopefully you decide to stick around for a little while. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. I'm very happy to see you again. So if you have been here for a while, you may remember that there are certain movies that I just simply don't want to watch because of their reputation. There have also been books that I've DNF'd in the past because they were just too intense and ultra disturbing. Uh, I scoured the internet about what the internet considers to be disturbing horror books and so now I'm going to give my opinion on them because that's what I do here at www.youtube.com. The books I'm going to be talking about obviously cover some pretty triggering topics otherwise they wouldn't be on anybody's most disturbing list. I won't go super in detail with any of the disturbing content. Just a fair warning though. First up is we need to talk about Kevin by Lionel Shriver. If you're not familiar with the book or film adaptation, the story is from the point of view of a mother who is reflecting on the life of her son leading up to her son Kevin committing a mass shooting at his school. The most disturbing part of this book is the mother's like complete and utter disdain for her child before he's even born. Obviously, I, I feel like that the book is meant to be a discussion on nature versus nurture. Like, was Kevin born that way? And his mother just knew because like only a mother could know that sort of thing, da 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 da. Or was she projecting and kind of created who Kevin became? It's a tricky topic in the book, I feel like, because she's reflecting like in retrospect. So I feel <laughs> I feel like she's kind of an unreliable narrator in that way because obviously hindsight being 2020, she might look back on Kevin's life and just be like, well, obviously he was a psychopath or a sociopath or whatever from day one. And I obviously knew. And it's like, did you though? <laughs> Ultimately, I didn't find this book that disturbing. I found it more frustrating like more so than anything else. And I was not a fan of the mother for many reasons, including the ones I just mentioned. So it was more of like an aggravating read for me uh, to be inside her head the whole time. <laughs> oh, House of Leaves. <laughs> I don't even remember half of this book to be completely honest with you. If you wanna watch The Chaos, that was my reading vlog for this. You're more than welcome to. You're not gonna find any like worthwhile commentary on the book in that video though, just a fair warning. But the internet mentions this time and time again as one of the most disturbing reads. I think more so in the sense that it's like very, very unsettling. <laughs> in a very, very pared down and simple summary of this book, it's about a family that moves into a house that is bigger on the inside. The book is an experience to be sure. Uh, the format of the book, reflects like the state of mind of the characters and the craziness of the house. So there's parts of this book you have to like turn the book certain ways to read it. There's footnotes all over the place. Sometimes there's footnotes to footnotes all you know referencing you know made up material. So it's a challenge to read this book in just literally reading it. <laughs> let alone comprehending anything. That being said though, it definitely does its job of putting you like in the mindset of these characters and really throwing you down a rabbit hole. I personally wouldn't define this as disturbing. To me it was a little more like frustrating and challenging, <laughs> but at least I can say I read it, kind of. So now we've come to the Stephen King section of this video because in my journeys across the internet to find what everybody considers to be the most disturbing books. As you would imagine, I encountered quite a few mentions to Stephen King's books. The three that I saw mentioned the most, and also out of the ones I saw mentioned the most, the three that I actually have read so far are The Shining, Pet Cemetery, and It. <laughs> I'm pretty sure when it comes to all three of these, for the most part, people are mentioning them as disturbing because they're unsettling. At least when it comes to The Shining, I definitely saw that in so many words. This one wasn't disturbing to me at all. Creepy, yes, but I was never like just in so intensely scared that I found it like disturbing. 
Pet Cemetery I could understand because obviously the themes of death, what happens to us after we die, grieving a loved one, and especially the fact that it very heavily involves like a child being viciously killed like in one of the most horrible ways I can imagine a child being killed. Um, and then of course the kid's grave being desecrated and him being brought back to life. That's all very disturbing. <laughs> so I, I tend to agree with this one. I think it got me in a more like emotional state, like this particular book as I was reading it. Um, but I, I can agree that the topic is very disturbing. And then when it comes to it, I feel like I've made it abundantly clear that there's really only one point of this book that I find disturbing. <laughs> if you know, you know. Flowers in the Attic, I definitely found disturbing. That's like the whole point of this super duper bleak story. I might even go so far as to say, I, I just in my opinion, I think it's more depressing than disturbing. <laughs> it's just really sad, like just really, really sad. But the incest was, hands down the most disturbing part of Flowers in the Attic for me. And also the fact that it's initiated in a rape scene also, which I really wasn't expecting. <laughs> it's only kind of hinted at in the film adaptations. Um, and of course the film adaptations left the like rape detail out because that's just way too much. <laughs> A big theme of the book, for me at least, that I found was cruelty for cruelty's sake. So it's not got the most happy or satisfying of endings to me. I guess fair warning to anybody who potentially wants to read it, but I definitely found this disturbing. My guess as to why The Exorcist was mentioned a whole lot might be because it's supposedly based on a true story. I didn't find this book disturbing at all, possibly because I had seen the movie so many times, like at the point of me reading it, and I was just so familiar with the story. Um, I could definitely see how this would be disturbing if you were reading it for the first time though, like with no prior knowledge of the, the movie or anything like that. The book makes it more of a debate throughout like I would dare say like the entire book as to whether Reagan is actually possessed or not but if you're reading this and you are familiar with the movie you possibly may not find it disturbing I didn't and finally tender is the flesh this book takes place in a dystopia where animals can no longer be consumed so in order for everybody to get protein and not have to change their lifestyle so much they start um, raising and slaughtering humans for consumption. We follow one character in particular who works at like a meat like processing plant kind of. A large portion of the book is him like his like his typical week I guess where he has to go um, see all these different vendors so we get to see all these different aspects of the society. We get to see like what happens to the meat for like consumption, what happens to other parts of the human body like the skin and things like that from all these different vendors. Meanwhile while this is happening our protagonist is also given this like purebred human woman that's meant to be like obviously raised for slaughter and when I say raised for slaughter these are not like people they're rounding up in the streets to eat they're like literally raising them for slaughter but he can't bring himself to kill her so he ends up keeping her in his house and other stuff goes on that I won't get into because of spoilers but basically what he's doing is illegal so that's like a huge conflict in the book. I'm not gonna say anything else <laughs> anything else about the plot or especially the ending because it is a huge 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 gut punch <laughs> and, and it needs to be experienced. You, like if you're interested in reading it just don't look up anything about it, anything else more that I've told you and just read it. If you are interested in reading this I will just give you a fair warning it is not for the weak of stomach. There were multiple parts throughout this book where I literally gagged like I was dry heaving and got sick to my stomach. It's <laughs> just the detail of it is just a lot. If you've read any of those books please share your thoughts in the comments if you happen to find it disturbing and why um, and if there's any other books that you have read that you found very disturbing please let me know in the comments so I can add more to my TBR. If you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here become a creepy peep today. I post a new video every Saturday which means I will see you next week.
with said new video. It's going to be a come with me review for Scream. I think that's obvious at this point. <laughs> so look forward to that. Um, and yeah, that's it. I I'll see you soon. Until then, stay strange.